so good. Cortez. <laughs> Cortez are good. <laughs> All right, let me find my Zoom so I can do a screen share. And there I am. Look at me. Uh, <laughs> hi, Mom. All right. Um, so, uh, so Quarto, uh, I want to talk about Quarto today. And basically, the focus of my presentation is just going to be on how I use it and stuff that I found really helpful about it and stuff that I'm kind of still struggling with. And maybe John or others will be able to uh, offer some suggestions. Um, but um, so Quarto is an open source scientific and technical publishing system. Um, and uh, it's sort of the next generation of uh, our markdown, except that it is, I don't want to say lang language agnostic, but it supports more languages. Um, this is, I think, part of uh, was our studio now posit their rebranding strategy to try to appeal to the Python community. Um, and the big promise of this is that you'll be able to produce uh, reproducible uh, production quality articles, presentations, websites, blogs, et cetera, as it says here in multiple different formats while integrating your text with your code, right? So no more of that clunky workflow of producing your visualization or your analysis and then having to cut and paste it and stick it in a Word document or something like that. Um, so that's the promise of it. And uh, for the most part, I find it, the promise is uh, fulfilled, especially when it comes to HTML documents. Uh, with PDF, I'm still struggling to get it to work because it's based on LaTeX and LaTeX yeah. is kind of a clunky uh, language. Um, I'll just, one aside here is just that uh, I was at the POSIT conference uh, and I saw a, uh, a presentation by Carlos Scheidegger where he was talking about a new typesetting system called Types. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's, um, I think, the future. Um, so if you want to be on the bleeding edge of this, it's like not available on the current released version of Quarto, but it's available in the current um, development version. And Types is kind of like LaTeX, except it's a more modern syntax and it's easier to troubleshoot and fix stuff when it goes wrong. So, um, so yeah, so let me switch over now to my code and I'll, I'll show you a few things uh, that I've been working on and how I've been using Quarto in my workflow and what's been successful and what I've, I've still been kind of working uh, with. Let's see, uh, just, I use it for everything though. I use it for like just taking little notes and stuff too. And, um, you know, I'll do meeting notes and then I'll, I'll you know, render it to an HTML and just present for my browser. Um, so, so make sure that I said everything I wanted to say about it. Um, so I think that's, I think, yeah, I, I pretty much covered everything in terms of the overview. So let me just kind of go, I'm gonna start with, um, the idea of producing a, a working paper or uh, or a, a an article uh, because that's that's kind of what is the promise of this. So that's what they're um, one of the main selling points is. And um, so um, I guess before I do that, just for people who are not maybe as familiar with Quarto. So if you if you just want to produce any kind of document, you can and then. Basically, it's easy as, you know, just drop downs and stuff to get started. And then you select the kind of document you want, HTML, PDF, or Word. You can also select the engine if you want a NIDAR um, engine. And you're going to be working mostly in R or Jupyter engine. You're going to be working mostly in Python. Um, and then you can also make Python notebooks. You can produce output, um, Python notebooks as output. Um, like I said, types is a new uh, document type. They also have a new manuscript document type, which I haven't played around with yet. And that may alleviate some of the issues that I'm, I've been dealing with here um, that I'm going to talk about here. But um, but in any case, I'm, I'm just starting off with this basic. I already have this um, set up. Um, so I'll just show you uh, what it looks like. So this is, um, let me minimize this. So I'm in RStudio here. And a lot of the action 
for a uh, you know for formatting the document occurs actually most of it occurs in this YAML header here. So that's the cool thing about Quarto. Just like in our markdown, the idea is that you tell um, you tell Quarto what you want the document to look like, how it's going to be formatted in the YAML, and then you don't have to mess around with you know formatting section headers or formatting you know where a figure is supposed to go the alignment of a figure and all that stuff it just it just does it for you kind of like LaTeX it's based in LaTeX um but then the output can be in multiple formats all right so what I have here is a working paper template um and I have the template you know all of the stuff that you would want to have in a working paper in my YAML header here. Um, so title, subtitle, uh, short title, um, whether it was published or not. And I'm in between metaphors here. I don't know if I want to go more with like a bullwinkle moose type theme, or if I want to go more with a Star Trek Starfleet type theme. So, um, so anyway, so there's a link for the code repo. Um, and then the format here that I'm using is not just a plain, you could just have format PDF and it would just produce a basic PDF document. But what I've done and what they're encouraging people to do is to produce your own templates, contribute templates to the community. So I've been working on this working paper template and that's over here in my extensions folder. And I have this e-title bomb working paper template. And these are the elements of the template, and I'm not going to go into all of that now. But then also you can import other kinds of templates, like in my extensions folder, you see that there's Quarto journals and I have an Elsevier template in here. Um, and their expectation is that they're going to roll out more, not posit, but the community is going to get together and produce more and more journal templates so that you know when you're submitting to a journal, you can give it in the format that they um that they prefer. Um, so I've seen some pretty good ones actually for political science coming out, um, APSR, HAPS, um, and a uh, few others, um, British Journal of Polit Political Science, BJPS. Um, and the way that you import those templates is you just, you go to your terminal and then you do a, I think I have, I just did one here, so. Um, uh, this is the syntax here. You do a uh, add quarto, add quarto dash journals, and then whatever the journal name is. And you have to kind of look that up. There's information on the website about, about that, like exactly what the template name is. All right, here's some stuff that I have commented out because I'm still working on it. I haven't actually added that to the template yet. Then all of these different author options you know, like an ORCID ID and stuff like that, address, so on and so forth, information about the author, some of which you may want to include, some of which you may not. Today's date, um, the date format, um, the abstract is here. Uh, the, I have a word count field in this template that's not available in all templates. Uh, number sections, uh, true gives me numbered sections, but you can set that to false too. Acknowledgements, keywords, uh, a reference title, a reference section. So one, after the document is finished, what do you want the reference section to be called? References. And then here's the bib file that I'm using for this. And it'll just automatically pull my citations from that bib file when I render it. Um, so that um, that's one of the big, you know, nice things actually since our markdown is the ability to, you know, write your, uh, do your citations with a very simple, call to the citation in text and then it renders that as um you know as a cite as a citation a full citation in the references section um so the other thing that's kind of cool that i've been messing around with john i think you presented on this last time but the parameterized reports so nice it is nice i mean i have some issues with it like titles and stuff but um but here i set something up where i so what Quarto will do is you can put the, these parameters in and then give them, you know, values. And so, and it'll store those and you can use those later in your code. So here I have, basically, these are the, the um, variable, you know, IDs. 
uh, the the ID the codes for for um, right now I have like the dependency ratio and GDP per capita from the World Bank Development Indicators data set, and then I'm using the World WB Stats package to pull those indicators into um, you know into R, and then Corto. Then, then using that to produce visualizations, render those visualizations in the in the um, in the document. So I can just go ahead and hold my breath here, and I'll just go ahead and render this, and then I can talk. We can see what it looks like, and then um, and then see if uh, so. Go back to the code and and talk about it a little bit more. Oh, did I change it to? I think I might have gone backwards here, but let's see. Mm -hmm. I know it's it's I, I have my working paper template here so let's see if it'll work should be a PDF references it's the incredible amount of machinery going on in yeah and all this kind of work with the with the PDF <laughs> yeah with the PDF it does take it takes a little while yeah I think it's uh, not optimized for speed yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what my little working uh, paper template looks like. Nice. You can see there's all the you know author information, uh, work work ID, and imagine doing that in Word. Yeah, I know it would take forever. So it's all <laughs> you just do it once, and then like you have to do it again. <laughs> you have to do it again and again. And so this way, you know, if people, the idea is that if everybody's contributing their templates to the community, which once I get this thing done, I will put it up on my GitHub, and then people can can import it and use it themselves. Mm -hmm. Then you know it's easy. Right. Um, that's the theory. <laughs> uh, it's easy for everyone else. It's, it's horrible for the one guy who's making the template. So thank you for, <laughs> yeah, for what you're doing. Sort of when you write for Moose Studies. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Moose Studies. So, you know, some things work out well in PDF, some don't. I mean, I'm still like, I try to put the, the variable info in here underneath my. Um, uh, Good. I'm good right now. I'll, I'll eat it. One more I'll eat it after. Yeah. Everything. You know, some stuff is looking good. Some some stuff isn't. So here's my map sort of embedded in the in the back. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot to do. It's a lot to do. And then um, what else do I want to show you? And one thing I'm having problems with, I said I was going to show you the limitations of this. Like doing a simple table sometimes can be a pain. Yeah. yeah. And so I've been trying, I've been working with cable extra. And cable extra seems to be the best, but still, like sometimes, like I can't figure out. I thought if I put this LaTeX code of like begin single space, it would give me a single space table, but it's double spacing my table. And I've been all over, you know, the Quarto CLI um, GitHub repo asking people about this, and they're like, "We're working on it," but things tend to work a little bit better in HTML than they do in PDF. So let me go back to my code here real quick. So one thing I could do if people are interested later on is, you know, we could change these parameters up here and then we would get totally different charts and maps. So that's one thing I can play with. Maybe I can just do that real quick here um, just to show people how that works for parameter parameterized reports. Um, I have it, I think I have it here. Yeah, so I can just copy this and then I'm gonna put instead of dependency ratio, I think I have female labor force participation here. And I'm just going to replace my parameters, and uh, and this one we'll call it his name. I had this before, but G per capita. G -P. All right, so let's give this a shot. See if that works. Hold our breath. You have to create a whole new template if you go from PDF to HTML. Uh, no, I can show you that uh, uh, quickly. Actually, I have one example here of if I use a different template, like uh, if I want a journal template. So now, just show you this real quick. Now we have female labor force participation in here. So we just changed out the map. You know, it's like a it's like a function. You know, and you can yeah. just change the variable. And you know, if you want to write. <laughs> You report to be on female labor force participation instead of the dependency ratio. Okay, well, we'll just change uh, change the variables. You can imagine some uses for that. 
All right, so getting back to this HTML, let me show you one example with HTML. There are some different things, like you can use the same template for HTML. So like, um, but it's gonna have different elements and you're probably gonna wanna do some, you know, CSS styling and stuff like that. So you can have a template, like if I go to my extensions and I go to Quarto Journals and Elsevier, um, you know, it's going to have partials, tech partials, and then it's also going to have some SCSS styling in here in the template. So it's pretty flexible. So like if I change this to like now, I in, instead of my working tape paper template, let's say now I'm ready to go ahead and uh, maybe submit this thing. And I was submitted to world development or uh, journal development studies, which mm -hmm. is a, where's my format? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and say, instead of, um, <clears throat> Elsevier um, HTML, I think it should be, let me see if that works. You know, I would just want to maybe I didn't I'm on my website in this case because it's HTML. You know, I want to impress people with the fact that I submitted this to a nice journal. So, you know, that's the HTML version, right? So it can it's pretty flexible moving back and forth. My issue here is that sometimes yeah, but sometimes you'll do like I'll do H Elsevier um dash. PDF instead, which you think would be the easier lift. Um, but, you know, it gives you um, <clears throat> some LaTeX error, which is going to make it most of the way through here. And then it's going to give me an error about something that I don't understand. And I don't know how to troubleshoot. And um, maybe some here, somebody here would. But even if I go to the log and I look it's for this error, you know. And That's and it's problem. and it says something oh control in late in global, global supply chain. chain so it must be something in the I was struggling to figure out because I was I was searching the document for control and global <laughs> supply chains I couldn't find it maybe it's in the in the table that I'm trying to build there yeah so you get these thorny issues with the LaTeX that I think still they still. I think they're going to shift over to this types thing. Honestly, I think that's the next move and abandon LaTeX, but we'll see what happens. I think uh, you'll, I think LaTeX will live around for a long time, like because you know the economists have to have something to typeset their papers. The computer <laughs> science, the too. The computer science all. is all in. Layla, I love it. Layla saying, Layla, you can't see it. No, I can't see it. Like the. PDF like and the and oh the... you can't see the rendered version yeah yes. exactly oh I'm sorry I'm only sharing the art yes thank you the whole desktop or something uh yeah let me let me let me just uh, do the whole desktop here and I can just show you now the um I'm sorry about that no worries yeah do the screen uh, I was trying to get a tighter view so people could see but uh so this is Manny can I ask a question um while you do that sure. Um, so in the beginning, when you, um, like when it was asking you if you wanted to like create a document or a presentation, there was also one that's an interactive, um, what does that interactive do? Do you know, like, is it, um, is it like shiny? I think it's a shiny app. Um, and you can build shiny apps inside the Quarto document, which might sound weird, but it's not really that weird if you think about it, because the Quarto doc, if you. It's mostly just two code chunks, like what's your UI and what's your server. And so you can write your yeah. code in it and render it. Um, and I think that's probably what it is, or it might just be a shiny app by itself. But that little, the, the template thing that it guides you through to select and set up a particular project. I don't I don't know until I go through and click on it, like what's actually gonna give me. They have a they have a shiny app extension, kind of like this journal extension here. Okay. So you import it, and then it allows you to run the shiny app inside of your 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 document. Yeah. So this is what it looks like, Layla, in HTML. Mm -hmm. uh, That's so nice thing. Yeah, and there's the there's the um, rendered chart, and there's the map, 
And like I said, if you change the parameters, I won't do it again here, but um, if you change the parameters, you can get a different or a different, different graph. Um, and this is the problem. Oh, actually, the, see, the table comes out in in, uh, in HTML. It, it looks great in HTML, but then if we try to do it in in um, yeah. in uh, in another format, it's I think, um, challenging. I'm not sure how they're doing it, but if, if I were to build a PDF engine, I would build an engine that builds from HTML code. Yeah. I would just have the engine make the HTML and then convert HTML to the PDF. That's what I would do. Because the HTML code is brilliant. It's so good. And there's so much built around it, about styling and all these things. You just need a translator that can say, here's raw HTML code. Because you know rows and tables and stuff are very easy. It's like TR, brackets. It's very easy to parse out. Yeah. So you just build a nice parser that can take that content and embed it into PDF. And I don't know if that's what they're doing, but my suspicion is they're doing something of that nature where they're going to use Pandoc to create something or they're going one level above. They're just using from how Pandoc takes the markdown and then from there going straight to some new typesetter that's not LaTeX. It's completely gut LaTeX because I think it's a I think sort that's of an outdated nightmare of a of a pack like system. I, I think it's especially yeah. tables. Tables are the notoriously like the worst thing in so, so, so this is the PDF document, Layla, and then and then Nick, you can see, okay, images, everything looks fine. Then you get to the table and look what it looks like. Yeah. So this is the issue I've been struggling with, and I think a lot of people are struggling with. But this new typesetting system here, if you guys want to check it out, um, I think this is what they're. I've seen this. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Um. Yeah. Everybody. I mean. Carlos was saying, I want to say typist, and I talked to the people and they told me it's typist, which I think is unfortunate. Okay, let's let's just call it typist. I think that sounds typist. better. Typist is better. Typist sounds horrible. <laughs> it sounds horrible. horrible. Nobody's going to use no types. Gonna say that. <laughs> but people will use typist. It's like so, being like, I'm going to call it. See, so this studio. is the this is the new syntax and stuff. And look, it's it's a modern, you know, syntax and it produces these beautiful documents and everything. And he did this. He did this amazing presentation where he took this complicated text, you know, and turned it into this, and instantaneously turned it into this beautiful academic poster. Yeah, yeah. You have. I'll, I'll send you guys a link to the presentation. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Ryan. So it's their ask? own product, or is it open source, or what is? Hey, this is no. This is a separate standalone thing that's been that's developed, being developed. It's in beta right now. That. Just like Quarto is pulling on LaTeX and pulling on, um, is using, you know, uses LaTeX. I think they're thinking about this as the replacement for LaTeX. But it's not something that Quarto is developing or that Posit is developing. It's something that they want to use as a document type in Quarto. So instead of so having all just a PDF, a have a type open source document. or not. Yeah. If, I mean, they could turn around next week and say it's $100 a month. Yeah. So. <laughs> They could, but currently or they're not. Just, uh, you know, or, or build it yourself. I mean, take take the underlying technology, just just and, and have, they could build their own version of it. I don't know, but I mean, ultimately, Pandoc is the heart of all of this. You know, Pandoc is the thing that takes whatever you've got and converts it to all these other outputs. And so right. that is an open source project that right that that lives, and that's the reason these things work. So. so when there's enough momentum behind something, they they move into Pandoc and figure out how do I get Pandoc to output the thing I want. Like take it from Markdown, stick it into Latte Code. They built those engines and it works. But the tables are still the worst thing in the world. And I never get I mean, Cable Extra is the best package. There is no better package for that. Tables and PDFs. But you got to read that documentation you know, line by line. And now I just try to chat GPT until it works. And, even that tends to struggle. Yeah. Like that's the one thing we can totally confuse the AI with is latte. Nothing, nothing more confusing than latte. <laughs> so skip that part is sort of it does seem like it's pretty optimized, you know, for HTML output. And yes. you know, I'm able to do a lot of cool things with with HTML. Like this is yeah. my course website. I think Layla's seen this before. Yeah. I think John's seen this before, but it has like kind of a cool uh, layout where I have my assignments and then my project assignments and then my my individual course modules if I can get down here. 
So uh, that's kind of like where a lot of the action is from my course. So, um, I, you know, you can embed video. So I have these YouTube videos that that teach them, teach my students all the basic stuff about, you know, uh, importing data, wrangling data, visualizing data throughout the course, you know. Um, so you can have these nice call outs in here and um, lots of nice styling. Um, links are really easy. Uh, you know, um, the it automatically, you know, like if you put uh, a package name or function in back ticks, it'll it'll style that for you. Um, it also does code highlighting and then gives you, you can have an option to have like um, links to the code documentation in your, see if this will work, in your code, which is really cool. So if you're teaching a coding course, there's lots of cool stuff you can do. And then of course it, you can choose whether or not you have options to output the code, you know, echo equals true or not. Um, to, you know, just show the code and not the output, et cetera, et cetera. And then I also find um, the reveal JS slides is another thing that you can do that I make use of a lot in my classes. So you can have a document like this where you have, you know, all your reference materials linked, the videos, all that stuff. And then you can have your slides embedded too. Like these are my slides from yesterday that I threw together and, um, you know, probably should take a little more time, but I was running short on time. And I mean, I put these together in just like a couple hours, you know, um, you're able to put together slides like this in a couple hours. It's pretty good. I get a nice little countdown timer package they have, and you can style it to have different like coloring and stuff. Um, so I did buff and blue timer <laughs> to match my theme for the, um, you know, that also matches the theme for the presentation. Um, code highlighting. So you could code highlight different lines of code in your code chunks, um, which is really helpful if you want to explain like, okay, what's changing in this code relative to last time, or what are the elements that are important? Um, then give them a little exercise and then a timer. It's great for workshopping, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. Um, you can include images, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm happy to go into more of this if you like um, in detail. So is that show pulling you out of the same or is that a separate Quarto doc? Yeah, so let me just show you the, the project for this. Um, so if I go to uh, project or open project, recent project, what happened from yesterday? So data is fall 2023. So all this is like, sort of embedded in a project uh, oriented or uh, you know workflow where you have dot our proj file in a folder and that sort of orients um, all of the files you know it, it tells R where you are so you don't have to do a set working directory et cetera so um, so these are all the different elements of my website okay and then I have a file in here separate files for modules projects et cetera et cetera I have a file for slides. Okay, and then I was showing you the slides from yesterday. So these are the slides. This is the code for the slides from yesterday. And then, you know, you see I have my code chunks embedded in there. Um, but are those the same code chunks that are embedded elsewhere? Or are those, like, are you linking to where they are in another document? So this is, is to the slide, or are you writing them again? Like, copy paste them from one into the other. So I write it all in the, in the project folder, I put everything in the project folder. Like next week, I'll have week 6.1. I'll be on to the next module. And we're going to be talking about like how to um, like accessibility for and and uh, theming for visualizations. And so I'll just start. What I'll do here is I'll just create a new Quarto document, you know, and I'll call it week uh, 6.1. Okay. And it's going to save that down here. And then I'll just take my whole, my workflow is going to be like this. I'm just going to take my YAML header and I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to say, you know, slide one. And then I'm going to render that. 
and then it's going to give me rendered HTML in here. Okay. And then um, from there, I'm going to go and I'm going to go to my index, you know, that index page that I had for the website. And I am going to go down here in the index. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is that you have the source mod mode, which I use most of the time. So you're just writing in basic markdown, but you also have this visual editor here. And if you, visual editor is really helpful for stuff like tables, like markdown tables, because otherwise they can get kind of messy in the, in the raw code. So I use the visual editor for that. And I'll just copy my little icon here. And then I'll go in here and I'll, you know, just change this to 6.1. I'll hit OK. And then I can just go ahead and render this for you. You see what it what it looks like. It's uh, not gonna have anything. Oh yeah. It should save it. So that's I didn't change anything, but that's my new presentation. Probably should render the index too, although I think it would have rendered it, but Oh, I didn't save it. You're right. Let me save it and then render it. And then the um, Corto preview thing is pretty lovely too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When you're yeah. building a website, if you want to interactively add things and see it updated, you, you can just type Corto preview and as you edit things and save them, it automatically re-renders the site. So you can quickly see like so, how, how things look and make a change. And it's just, it's just so nice. It's really cool. And then the, <laughs> then what I'll do is I'll just push it to GitHub. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do, do use this, use this, use GitHub. And then I'll say, uh, 6.1 slides or something. Whoops. Whoops. Why are you doing that? Sticky one key. And then uh and then I'll push it. And then it'll push it to you know, to GitHub, and then I have Netlify, basically have it hooked up to Netlify. So Netlify, Netlify is trained on GitHub. And then when GitHub, when the GitHub repo updates, um, so does uh, Netlify, and then so does the, um, the course website. It'll take a few seconds to do it. But then another nice thing is it automatically does this. I, I don't know if I said this or not, but you can you can go to the you know to the code of my GitHub repo and see uh, where everything is. Uh, this is summer 2023. I don't know why it's. Oh, I thought I started a new repo for that, but oh, maybe it's linked to the wrong repo. I don't. I have to go look. Oh, I must have not have changed it in the YAML header. Yeah, so I have to go change that. But it should theoretically go to my GitHub repo there. Um, let's see if it's updated now. Go over here. Nope, not updated yet. Not updated yet, but eventually it will. Uh, but that's the basic idea. I don't know if that um, answers your question, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, I, I think it's distinctly different from the Jupyter system. Quite different. I think the goals are quite different. I think I kind of describe it as a publication system for people. As opposed to Jupyter, I think is much more of a um, a coding system. It's, much, it's like a replacement for an IDE. Oh, I had a yeah. GitHub error. I gotta yeah. debug that, unfortunately. Okay, so. But I yeah. I think a lot of folks who are coming from Jupyter are kind of like, why do you have this? Because we've already got Jupyter. What does this do? And you can do a lot of similar things. Like you can take a Jupyter notebook and compile it to a PDF manual of your book or something. Like that's definitely a thing. And the Jupyter ecosystem is very large and built out. But I, I feel like it is a very different feel to work with this because it's all plain text. Yeah. I mean, there's no engine or anything needed. It's only when you render that it runs through something and it's running through the Corto CLI. It's its own thing um, that can pull on R or Python or any other 
language that's supported if it wants to code in the background. So it's sort of static in that sense. You're taking static snapshots of code. You're not going to get a thing where you can click a button and run it. But that even that is changing now because you have these extensions that you can embed a shiny app in the page, and now all of a sudden you have that interactivity, just like you would in a in a Jupyter system where you build a website and on this page you can click a thing and see it run live because there's a shiny app in the background. So you can you can get a lot of similar functionality, but you're still just writing plain text. And when you work with GitHub and things like that for version controlling, it's just so beautiful because oh. you, you never have these like complicated Python, I, I Python notebooks or whatever these things yeah. are that have to be rendered in a browser and stuff. You can, you can just see the plain text file and and just write markdown. So I, I'm excited for where this is all going. It's all building from the R markdown, but what Yihui and others built in R markdown many years ago, it's like the perfected version of that, <laughs> the more perfect version of that. Or at least perfect for now. Perfect for now. But certainly an improvement over, over the stuff that ran through R. Now it just runs through its own external thing, Porto, and it opens up the ecosystem to a lot more developers. And yeah, I think it's um, going to get very, very good. It's already very, very good, getting a lot better. The the stuff that the, the web R stuff is really crazy though. That's where it's getting lovely. Where like you can run R in the browser. There's no mm -hmm. the serverless apps and stuff. That's gonna be really cool. They they already have that now where serverless apps. <laughs> yeah. So it's using Wasm to run Python or R code in your browser with no server. So you can have a Corto document that has like a shiny app with no server attached to it and it runs. It just seems like total wizardry, but they're using um, Web R, which is its own sort of like assembly language to take R code and use the web browser to run it. And they've already had this now for Python. They have Python came out first. So oh yeah, we did that yeah. in the spring. Yeah, it's just, it's very new. It's using the same thing. It's then. the same idea, but they've built it out for R now too. Okay. So you can run Python or R code in your browser with no server, and for something like a dashboard where you just want to display, you know, data to someone and let them click and get the interactivity of it, it's just incredible. It's a static HTML page that has this interactivity to it. It's like lightning fast too, which is just happening right there. No server. And it's using Java and the JavaScript and in the, the background. back end of everything. JavaScript is the orchestrator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> it's getting really fun. Yeah, JavaScript um, is just amazing. Yeah. So we're we're moving into a very different like world now where you're gonna have interactivity easily now. I mean, it's so much easier. You don't have to worry about servers or anything. Just, just render to an HTML page, stick it on the web. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. It's really cool. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll stop the video recording there. I think I messed up my GitHub, but I used I use 